Okay, a few little tips and tricks for installing a crush sleeve eliminator. Not so much tips and tricks, just how to do it, I guess, but there's a couple other things I'm gonna talk about. I'll try and make this video quick. So if you're gonna use a typical crush leaf on a uh, pinion, the whole concept is when you put the crush, you, you put your, your, your shims on, you press your bearing on, and when you press your bearing on, you put your crush sleeve on, and your crush sleeve goes on top of the bearing that sits on top. And then when you start tightening up your, your pinion net, what happens is you have back and forth play, and you continue to, to tighten it, tighten it, tighten it, tighten it until the crush sleeve has no more play. It doesn't move one way or the other. It's completely dead stopped. And it takes about 250 pounds to start crushing the sleeve. So then from there, what you do is you, you check the rotation of it, and then you start crushing it down. You, you, you grab a hold of your yoke, you, you get something to clamp it, and then you start cranking it down, and you check your rotation, check your rotation, check your rotation, and you check your, your uh, how many pounds it takes to get the, the pinion to move. Typically, it wants to be around 16 to 20 is what your preload is what you want it to be. Uh, if you tighten this up too much, the pinion's gonna stop moving. It's going to be jammed, and you're not going to be able to have any rotation. You can't undo that once you do it. So, unfortunately, if you do that, the crush sleeve is now damaged, and it is no good. And you only get one shot, and that's it. So, they make <clears throat> this little guy here a crush sleeve eliminator. So, this is the same basic concept. You put your shims on to get your pinion dead. You put your bearing on, and then you put this, and it sits right on your bearing. If you put just this on, what happens is... Uh, your your pinion is going to be so tight it's not going to be able to move. So then you you add a shim and you check it. You add a shim and you check it. You add a shim and you check it. By removing it, putting a shim, removing it, putting a shim. Okay. And this sits on the bearing. So then what happens is whenever you put enough shims in there, it's going to start rotating. You put too many shims, you're going to get a back and forth. You can grab it and clack 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 clack. Any kind of movement's bad. Any kind of movement. You don't want no movement, none, zero. But you want to be able to rotate it at least one rotation. If you grab it and rotate as hard as you can, you want at least one rotation or close to one rotation. It's about 16 to 20 pounds. Now, here's the kicker. Whenever you're doing this, here's a tip, guys. Go and buy a brand new bearing, the same kind or whatever, the same, the exact same bearing that's gonna go on your pinion. And then you're gonna take a flapper disc. Richard, can you hand me the drill so I can show them? You're gonna take a flapper disc. If you don't know what that is, I'm gonna show you what a flapper disc is. This is the inner bearing race, right? This is the inside of a bearing. The bearing sit on the outside here, use y'all's imagination. You're gonna take this flapper disc right here on a drill. If you don't have a honing tool, if you have a tool like the, the honing attachment, use that, it's better. If not, take this in here, go around and around and around and around and around and around. It's gonna take probably about 20, 30 minutes. Go about two to three minutes, four minutes, check. Two, three minutes, check. Two, three minutes, check. Two, three, until it just slips on there but it doesn't drop right on. You don't want it just to fall on, but you want it to be a little snug, but not too tight to come off. Let it cool down, and then make sure it's still gonna go on and off, because once it heats up, it's gonna expand. When it, cold, it gets cold, it's gonna contract. So if you have to redo it again a couple times after it cools down, just make sure that it's, it's right. The reason why I'm telling y'all this about the bearing is because whenever you're doing this, everything's gonna have to go on and off, on and off, on and off. You put these shims on first to get your pinion depth right and then you put your crush sleeve on and then you check your crush sleeve and you have to get your crush sleeve just right once you get your crush sleeve right your crush sleeve eliminator and you get that correct you put your carrier in and there's shims on both sides so you have to get your carrier shim correctly if your tolerance is too low like you have too small of a tolerance like one to three that means that the pinion that means that the carrier needs to move away from the pinion so you're going to shim on the uh, you're going to shim to the driver's side. This is for the Dana 30, right? Okay, I'm just making it simpler. If, if you don't have enough tolerance and it's too low, you need to move the carrier away from the pinion. If there's too much of a tolerance and it's too big of a tolerance, you need to move it closer to the, to the pinion. Once you get that right, it should be between 4 to 6, 4 to 8, whatever. Somewhere around there is, is a happy number. Once you get that right, you put your paint on your ring and you check your pattern. If your pattern is too far forward, too far back, it's too in, too out, you have to take everything back out and you have to pull that bearing back off. If that bearing is pressed on, when you go to take it off, you're, you're, you're damaging the bearing. The bearing's gonna get ruined, it's gonna get messed up, you're not gonna be able to reuse that bearing, it's, it's trash. So you make that mock-up bearing and you just slide it off 
take your shim out, measure it, and make your adjustment, whether you need to go up or down, or depending on where your pinion at. When you do that, you have to re-put your crushed sleeve eliminator and check it. You can't just put it back in how it was. It's going to change. You have to re-shim your, your crushed sleeve eliminator and get that correct again. Put your carrier back in, re-shim it correctly, check your tolerance. Run your bolt pattern, run, run on your mark pattern, and then if it's still wrong, you have to take it all back apart, pull the pinion back out, pull the bearing back off, change your shims out, put it back on, put the crush sleeve, check the crush sleeve, get the crush sleeve right, put this back in, shim it correctly, get your tolerance, check your bolt pattern, your, your, your paint pattern. If it's not right, guess what? You gotta do it all over again, over and over and over and over. So to have a bearing that slides on and off is awesome. To be able to have a sleeve that you don't have to worry about over tightening and crushing is awesome. They're very forgiving. You use one of these, not so forgiving. You press your bearing on, not so forgiving. You're going to go through quite a few of them and a lot of money if you don't get it right the first time. And if you're changing gear ratios, chances are you're not going to get it right the first time. Even if you have to do it once, you're going to ruin a $25 bearing. And that's more money than I want to spend on a mess up whenever I can make one that I can do as many times as I want. And the Dana 44 bearing works for the Dana 30 bearing, the exact same bearing for the pinion. The pinion is the exact same size for the bearing for as far as it goes for the Dana 30 and the Dana 44, exact same size. So that's just a couple little things um, that I wish I would have known. Last tip, whenever you're doing this, do not use the one that comes with the kit, the nut, the pinion nut. Don't use the one that comes with the kit. Take the one that came off of the pinion, grind it all the way down to about half of the bolt, the nut, because it's crimped, so it's oblong, and it has a little dill in there that's going to gall up your threads, and when you run it on and off, on and off, on and off so many times, it's not going to hold like it's supposed to. This is basically a one-time nut. So if you put it on there, it's going to it's gonna round it back out instead of oblong, and then it's going to loosen up that grip, and it's going to gall your threads up, and you're going to ruin your nut and your pinion threads. So grind this down the old one and use this as a nut to take on and off while you're testing fitting everything it seems like a lot but it really isn't and it makes the job a lot faster a lot more convenient when you're not damaging and going through parts um, that's just a little quick video um, about that I can't really think of anything else at the top of my head that comes to for this but those are the basics and if you, you understand that then you you'll you'll get this job done no problem so thanks for watching and that's it for this one